Today, we're going to use one of the most popular LLM frameworks on the market, and that's Langchain. And we'll even build a small project using it. So you learn it in action and not just theory. I want you to stick around till the end of this video because there's a very important reason why we're learning Langchain. And that's because there are some really awesome projects coming up on this channel, and you need to know the basics of Langchain for that. Now, many of you might think that Langchain was relevant when OpenAI models and features were not that advanced. But actually, the thing is, Langchain is still quite relevant. It basically is a very rich library helping us to work with LLMs very easily. It gives us various abstractions to be able to work with multiple different types of LLMs, but without much code changes at our end. This means you can work with different LLMs like GPT-4, Cloud Opus, Llama 3, and many more using Langchain without having to set up everything differently. Well, Langchain is actually much bigger than that. It provides everything required to build awesome projects with LLMs like prompt templates, retriever modules, memory for LLMs to store context of their tasks, callbacks, hubs to discover better prompts, community-made tools and plugins, even agents. And that's the whole reason I'm showing you Langchain because this video is going to be a part of the LLM and Gen AI projects playlist on my channel. And in the previous video, we learned how to work with crew AI agents. Now, I wanted to show you an awesome project with Langchain agents, but before I can do that, I wanted to make a video on just Langchain and just show you the basics of Langchain so that you get an idea about how cool this library is. And in the next three to four videos, we will build a few small Langchain projects. And the way I've set them up is that we'll end up learning all the important features of Langchain while building these projects. And this will prepare us for our main project where we will build agents using Langchain. And this is why I asked you to stick around till the end of this video and learn Langchain basics. The reason for all the confusion is that Langchain started off as a RAG project or Retrieval Augmented Generation. If you don't know what RAG is, I can explain to you in very simple terms. Think of it as talking to your documents. So LLMs like GPT-4 could talk to you based on the data they were trained on. But if you wanted specific information about a particular PDF, Word, Doc, or an article, you could use Langchain to guide the LLM to use that to answer your questions. And then people thought, oh, GPT-4 can now accept documents and I can chat with my documents directly. So I probably don't need RAG tools like Langchain. Well, you might be right. You probably don't need RAG tools as much, but like I said, Langchain is much bigger than that. So you definitely need Langchain and it's still highly relevant and powerful and can help you build some seriously killer apps. And it's open source and free with extremely clear documentation. Check out this architecture diagram in their official docs. Notice all the layers and the various capabilities that this framework has. Now, there are still a few features of Langchain that even this diagram doesn't have, like LangGraph and LangServe. And this just shows us how rich the framework actually is. Today's project only has Langchain, and I'll cover LangGraph, LangServe, LangSmith in future videos. Now, in any Langchain project, you'll notice something called chain, and that's the base concept of Langchain. And if you open up the official docs, it says chains are a sequence of calls, whether to an LLM, a tool, or a data preprocessing step. Now, check out the highlighted text. These chains natively support streaming, async, and batch out of the box. These chains automatically get observability at each step. So this just makes calling LLMs way more organized, and you can handle errors and retries with more ease. All right, so we have a basic idea of what Langchain is, but let's see it in practice. Now, let's look at the core of our project. Please know that I'll leave you the link of this Google Colab in the description of this video. So make sure you make a copy of it, run the project, make changes, and that's how you learn. We start off by importing Langchain, OpenAI, and Hugging Face Hub. Now, the reason we have both of these is because through this basic code file, I'm going to show you how you can work with GPT models via OpenAI and any open source models via Hugging Face, because mostly that's all you'll be doing, since all the popular models like Llama 3, Falcon, Google Flan are easily available on the Hugging Face Hub. Then we are setting our OpenAI key and Hugging Face tokens. So first, we use GPT 3.5 Turbo. And as you can see, on the first line, we import OpenAI from Langchain.LLMs, where Langchain.LLMs has the collection of all LLMs that can be used via Langchain. And we can easily use any of these without having to change any settings from our end. So Langchain acts as the interface. Then we specify the model we need from OpenAI, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we set the temperature and max tokens, and we give it a prompt. Why did the duck cross the road? And we get an output saying to get to the other side. So we get a nice answer. Then we use Google's T5 Flan model using Hugging Face Hub, which again, we're accessing using Langchain.LLMs. And you can see that we mentioned the repo ID to access the particular model. And also the arguments, which in this case is the temperature. Now, it doesn't matter what model you use from Hugging Face, this will be the process. Then we give it a prompt, why did the chicken cross the road? And we get a weird output saying that the chicken was a pig. That makes no sense, and that's probably why Nobody uses Google T5 Flan model, but it loads quickly and runs fast because it's light. So in case you want to test out if you're able to fetch models from Hugging Face, 
This is one of the fastest ways. Next, I want to show you a cool feature that we get with Langchain and that's called prompt templates. Think of this as a contextual prompt for the LLM to always behave in a particular way. If you've used OpenAI APIs before, you might have done something similar. And if you've enrolled for my six Go Plus AI projects course, you definitely know what I'm talking about. The link for the course is in the description and we build real world production level AI projects. So don't forget to check it out. Anyway, coming back to our core example, we first import prompt template from Langchain. Then we set up a restaurant template where we're telling the LLM what we wanted to do. So we will be passing it what a restaurant does. And then we wanted to suggest a name for the restaurant. Then we set our prompt template with our input variables and our template. Then we create three different descriptions for restaurants, a Greek place, a burger place, and a cafe. And we format our prompt template. In the next section, we finally create our chain. And this is what you'll see being used in blank chain projects, because this is where you're actually defining your input to LLM and calling the LLM, which is there in the next line when you write chain.run. And you pass the description number three, which is for the cafe that has live hard rock music. And we get 10 different options suggested by the LLM. And these are all great options, to be honest. So this is how you use prompt templates. Now, the next section shows us how we can perform fine tuning on our model using Langchain with something called as few short learning, where we provide a few examples to the model and train it to do a small task. So in the code, you see that we import few short prompt template from Langchain. And in the next cell, we give it some examples, like if the word is happy, then the opposite is sad. And if the word is tall, then the opposite is short. And that's it. That's all that's required for the model to understand what you want it to do. Now, the model is pre-trained, which means it already has a great embedding of all these words. And this few short example can show it how to find relations between these embeddings. It already has. If you're not sure how fine tuning, embedding, and attention works, you need to check out my LLM concepts playlist where all this has been clearly explained. So next, we create an example prompt using the prompt template. And we create our few short prompt by using the few short prompt template that we earlier imported from Langchain. We pass in the examples, example prompt, prefix, suffix, input variables. Then we finally create our chain with the LLM and the prompt, and we pass in the word big. And this is why in the output, we get back small, which is the opposite of big. And this means our LLM understood very clearly what to do. All thanks to prompt templates and few short templates provided by Langchain. Now, a quick word for the sponsor of this video, which is you. Yes, you heard it right. You are the sponsor of this video because there's no sponsorships and partnerships on this channel, at least until now. And since this channel is really small and the content is super niche, it doesn't get picked up by the algorithm unless you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. And also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to join our Discord where we hang out and discuss stuff around technology mostly and maybe some memes. The link is in my YouTube profile. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.